Hi floss tube friends, this is Sherry, Colorado cross stitcher, and this is my floss tube number 24, which I've entitled Where Have You Been? Because it's been a minute, hasn't it? Uh, this is my channel about cross stitching with a little bit of shop news for coloradocrossstitcher.com at the very end. So I feel like it's been forever since I've talked to you, and that's because it just work has been so busy we um, decided that I was going to retire from the yarn business. Most of you know I've had the Loopy U shop for uh, 16 years this year and I'm just having so much fun focusing on the cross stitching and trying to do both is always difficult. I mean I've done two before because we had quilting fabric for um, six or seven years too. Anyway we decided to do a retirement sale. We announced it January 31st and we're just slammed. I mean, I don't even know where the whole month of February went. We were just working so many hours. Things were so crazy, getting so many orders shipped out. And so that's, that's where I've been, trying to deal with all that. The good news is one of my longtime employees, Christine and her husband, Bob, um, are buying the business. They'll reopen the shop on April 30th or May 1st. And so we're super excited about that. I'm so happy that Loopy lives on. It's been such a fun part of our family for all of these years. And I know it's gonna be a wonderful part of Bob and Christine's family too. So um, Colorado Cross Stitcher will still be in the back corner for um, quite some time. And I'm really looking forward to putting all my time and energy into cross stitching, probably in a month because we still have a month of things to go on for the transition of the business. But anyway, so that's the short story of everything that's been going on. I am really tired and I know I look tired. Don't tell me I look tired in the comments. You know, when people say you look tired, that's never a good thing, is it? Because what they mean is, oh gosh, are you okay? Because you, you look tired, are you not sleeping? I'm worried about you. But what we hear being on the other end is, what in the world is wrong with you? You look awful. So, you know, it's never a good thing to hear you're tired. So I know I look tired. I will have more sleep in a month. And hopefully when I come back, I won't look so tired. But I have done some stitching, even though it's been a really super busy month. Um, my last floss tube, number 23, was a shop tour. That was super fun to do. So, um, Thanks for all your fun comments on that. I've, of course, already changed things and brought in a couple new walls of patterns since then, so I'll have to do another shop tour sometime in the future just to kind of share that with you. But it was fun to do, and like I said at the end of that video, I really did feel like I'd just been shopping with you because I walked through the shop, I looked at some of the patterns I love, talked to you about them, and so it was almost therapeutic. You know what's therapeutic when you go shopping sometimes? That felt therapeutic. So. Let's go on to the stitching. So first of all, I'm gonna show you my stitchers calendar, which I'm having a lot of fun filling out. I've um, talked to you before about how I had it spiral bound. I had clear front and back put on to kind of protect it. I added pages in the back. Um, but I talk about this on um, Floss Tube 22, so if you wanna see more about it, but I've added um, plans and stash and smalls that I want to do and then um, Laura from Brenda and the Serial Starter had the idea of putting an events page in her uh, I don't know if she's doing a scrapbook or if she's doing a one of these books I know she's doing one of these books I'm not sure where she put her events but I thought that was a good idea and so anyway I've added those pages in and also then a page with my pictures of my finished projects. You'll notice I have not added to that since I last talked to you because I haven't fully finished anything since then, but I have some coming up, which I can't wait to share for, with you. Um, the way I do my book is I bought one of these, which is crazy expensive, but they're half price now if they have any left. Um, they, I think they went to half price in January. They were $25, so I'm determined to use all of the stickers in this book. Well, not all, because as we discussed previously, there are some weird stickers in this book. But what I do is I've gone through and added um, stickers to a lot of the back pages that I have yet to get to, because I didn't want to get to October, for instance, and have 
you know, no fun stickers left for October. So as I find stickers I like, I find a place for them in here. And since it is my goal to use all of the stickers in that book, or a lot of the stickers in that book, I really have fun just putting them all over the place. This is my anti-scrapbooking stance, and there's that doesn't mean anything against scrapbooking. I was a scrapbooking consultant for, I think, 15 years, and loved it, still love scrapbooks, but everything was so precise and planned out in my scrapbooks and I'm just having fun just slapdashery with these stickers so here is my January over here I put any new starts I've had um, and if I have room I put stash so here's January and here's my February <laughs> again my stickering cracks me up and then so far in March I have had no new starts in March but I'm getting ready to start a new project or two, and I will talk to you about that in a minute. So anyway, I'm having a lot of fun with this calendar. I don't necessarily fill it out every day, but I fill it out every few days because then I can easily remember what I worked on. I usually work on things for about a week and then I move to something else. I'm going to show you a new start today that I have not been able to put down. I'm going on three weeks with it. So let's get to those things. Well, I think I did this in the opposite order I meant to show you, so I'm just going to pull... Okay. Uh, last time we talked, I talked to you about Jane Bannister, and I was saying perhaps I won't start this for my birthday start, which is what I had intended, because of that floral border. Only because I'm doing LR... I don't know, LR 1847 something by Rafle de Soie and it has a big thick floral border like this and I thought maybe I should get that finished before I start in on another floral border but even as I was talking to you guys about it like talking through it on my floss tube number 22 I realized you know that has this big cat on here and we lost our sweet Gracie cat in January and I decided I'm going to do this particular one for not only her but probably I will work in all of the cats that we've had in our married life um, throughout the border or somehow I gotta figure out how I want to do that but then I got it in my head that I wanted to start it the same week that she passed away so I worked on this this is on 40 count Newcastle Cafe Olay here's my start and my progress and I just I had a lot of fun doing it you know there's a butt coming. I had a lot of fun doing it, but on this side, right above the heart, do you see that particular motif? Now I'm going to get up so you can see it closer. That particular motif above the heart is one over one. All right, I don't mind one over one so much. You know, it's kind of different. It kind of breaks up the rest of the project and I don't mind doing it, but by the time I was done with that, because there are leaves, there are stems, there are flowers, by the time I was done, I thought, thank goodness, that one over one is done, and I am moving on to another project. Well then, I was looking at the pattern, and there's another one exactly like it on the other side. I couldn't believe it. I am not in the mood to do another little vase of one over one for a while. So I'm not going to do the other side. When I go back to this, I'm going to move on down the line a little bit. It's It looks so pretty. I mean, really, if you're doing one over two, you know, regular stitching, and then you have a little bit of one over one in your piece, it looks so pretty. It looks so petite, almost like petty point, And it's... It's just so pretty, but doing it is just takes longer than if you were doing regular stitching. So anyway, I can't believe I have to do another one of those. All right, so my next one, I went back to his eyes on the sparrow, which I, I just love this piece so much. And this one is by Heartstring Samplery. I know you all have seen it. 
Again, I got mine spiral bound. I like to spiral bound things if I can because it's just easier to be able to open it up and fold it back. And so anyway, I went back to working on that. Here's my progress on that. So I had the border, the words, oh, you're looking at the back because I can read the words front on. Okay, there you go. I had the border and the words done and also the tree. So this time I did Adam and Eve and that big flower and all those little animals and all of that. Now, does it or does it not look like Adam and Eve are wearing fanny packs? Right, look. Fanny packs, that's all I can think of when I look at that. They're wearing fanny packs. And that's no diss to the designer because that's how all of these were done back in the day, but I don't know that I've ever had an Adam and Eve sampler that looked so much like a fanny pack, right? Fanny pack. Kind of cracks me up. And that dog, okay, that dog looks like Marmaduke to me. You know, you're stitching things, you kind of get to know the... Um, thoughts of the designer or, well, that's a little presumptuous. Just kind of get into the mind of the person who designed it or the person who stitched it. So I'm just kind of personalizing it as I go along. Adam and Eve with the fanny packs and Marmaduke the dog. All right, so that's that I worked on. Then February, and that was the start of February winter cross stitch camp. And so I did Bristol Berries this is Bristol Berries 1 from Erica Michaels, which I guess I didn't get that pattern out. And the challenge in winter camp, the month of February, was to do a one color project. And it was so fun to see everybody's projects. If you go on Instagram and you look under the hashtag winter cross stitch camp, you'll see all of these thousand, over a thousand, I don't even know how many, close to 2,000 probably pictures of everybody's progress on winter cross stitch camp and um, it was super fun so i wanted to do this because i've wanted to do this one ever since i saw that pattern come out i love that it's a little red sampler i thought it would look really fun on my someday one color sampler wall and as i was looking at it i thought well i love the houses but i don't know about those random addresses like, I don't know if I want, should I put our address on that? And should I put my initials? But I really, you know, February was so nuts. I really didn't want to have to take the time to um, graph out something else. And so what I thought I would do, after I read more about the Bristol Berry, in the pattern, the Bristol Berries, and that this was for George Muller, who was in charge of starting Bristol Orphanages, I thought, well, I'm gonna rewatch that documentary. About three years ago, I think Vanna, the Twisted Stitcher, recommended um, George Muller's documentary, which I will link below for you guys. And my husband and I watched it, and I remember at the time thinking, wow, what an incredible man, um, such a man of faith, and all of the things he did for those orphans were just amazing. And so we watched it again, and all of a sudden, so all of this became meaningful to me after watching it because the top address and these houses are where he and his wife lived when they first started taking in orphans. And this was their address um, on Wilson Street. And they kept buying more and more of these row houses so they could add more and more orphans in. And then finally, they decided to build an orphanage and that's what Ashley Down is, where they built their own big orphanage, orphan, orphanage orphanage and um, so that all of a sudden made this piece really special because now I will remember what those addresses symbolize and then I added the two crosses down at the bottom because uh, he, he was just such a man of faith and I thought that needed to be a part of his design too and so it made it much more meaningful to me to go back and watch that documentary and remind myself of you know the history of um, Bristol samplers and how they came about and the man who was responsible for saving so many of those children. So that was my first piece and I haven't decided how I'm going to finish this yet. 
I know that if I want it on my wall, I, I will need to frame it. I think it would also look cute on a board. I mean, I guess I could also make a big pillow out of it too. I don't know. I probably will end up framing it. I will let you know what I end up doing with that. All right, so that was Bristol Berries 1 by Erica Michaels. And then I worked on Huckleberry Farm. All right, I have a thing with this Huckleberry Farm. This is by the Blue Flower. And you know, I still think this vine along the side is one of the most beautiful vines I've ever seen with the berries and the white flowers and the squirrels. So this is my progress. And what I did was that whole line underneath the bottom of the alphabet. Well, I have an issue with that butterfly. For some reason, I could not get that right to save my life. Uh, it's still wrong, but we're not going to look at it very closely. Uh, but I just did not enjoy doing that butterfly at all. I don't know. I was trying to do it line by line, and I was doing the black, so I was basically outlining it, and I was using a magnet, so I was just I still screwed it up. I just don't know how I did it. It looks fine, right? What I did was I put I put in my planner a big old butterfly sticker on the day that I was working on that with a frowny face. Not happy with that butterfly. But again, I love the piece and I love working on the little bears. They're so cute and I love that it has mountains in it. And again, that border, I mean, you just can't beat that border. And this is done on 40 count fiber on a whim stone. I believe it is stone. It's either stone or slate, and I can never remember which it is. And now I am very good at writing the things down now on my sides here, but I started that before I started this calendar, so. Moving forward, I can tell you all the time. This time, no. Then we come to my next piece. So this was my piece that I decided to start for my birthday, which was at the end of February. And this is the piece that I haven't put down since because I somehow just can't stop working on it. And that's A Quaker Dwelling by Kathy Barrick. And I, I love Quaker motifs and things. I love houses and I love teal. And I was especially inspired by Olivia B when she showed hers on her floss tube and if you don't watch her floss tube you should and in but in my mind I was like oh Olivia did hers on that beautiful mustard color I'm going to do that and she said I could copy her because she's nice like that and so I picked out this piece and this is Havana by um, Weeks Dye Works and I picked out this piece and I'm working on it and I thought Oh, I wonder I wonder what color she actually used and I go to her floss or her Instagram she didn't use a mustard color at all she used like a clay color which is absolutely beautiful with these colors but I don't know where in my mind I just had this idea I was going to do it on the mustard color because of Olivia well I guess Olivia inspired my doing it on a color versus doing it on white so here's my progress so far and again, this is on Havana by Weeks Dye Works. And apparently I just really like doing bricks. I don't know, that was really fun. And that roof, the zigzag on the roof, I mean, that was fun to do. And so there's two more rows of um, windows on this. So I'm only a third of the way done. And I feel like I've been working on it for ever. But again, you know, so busy at work work that my stitching time is limited or I come home and I think oh, I'm gonna stitch for an hour tonight and then I do like a row and I think I just need to close my eyes for a few minutes because my eyes are tired from working on the computer and then next thing I know I'm just it's time to go to bed so I guess I haven't had as much time to stitch as I thought but isn't this a fun piece it's done in MPI silks which is what the pattern calls for and I just love the teal colors. They're really, I mean, they look teal. They're really a greenish teal. And then, you know, there's a lot more house to do and a lot more of the Quaker motifs, but 
every time, like after that first week, every time I come home, I think, okay, I'm going to start something else, or I'm going to go work on such and such. And then I pick this back up and just keep working on it. So it has been super fun to work on and I'm going to put it away for a little bit now, but I'm anxious to get back to it. Okay. And that was 32 count weeks. And I wanted to say something about fabrics that are hand dyed because when you get the classics, and I call the classics things that come from directly from Zweigart. Um, so it's the like platinum and winter moon and white and antique white and cream and all of those colors. Um, that's how that 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 fabric has not been hand dyed. So when it says it's a 32 count, it's a 32 count. When you use hand dyed fabric. The hand dyeing process will shrink your fabric and it's going to be smaller than you think it's going to be. So for example, this was 32 count, but I knew that it was smaller than that just from stitching on it. Well, it, I counted it. So what I do when I count is I put a straight pin here and I measure out two inches and I put a straight pin here and then I count the number of threads in between the two and divide it by two and that tells you how many threads per inch and that's what 32 count means there are 32 threads in an inch 40 count means there's 40 threads in an inch the reason you do two I, that's just left over from my knitting days because when you get when you check your gauge you always do four inches and then divide down by four and then you can kind of figure out what you're doing per inch it just gives you I think a more accurate look at it when you do more than one particular inch. So this 32 count is actually 35 count that I'm stitching on. So just beware when you're purchasing hand dyed uh, fabrics, it's usually going to be smaller holes than what you may be anticipating or what you may be used to. And then the other thing is when I work on darker fabrics, fabrics which I haven't done a lot of, but I do usually go down down in the number of the fabric. So if I usually stitch on 40 count, I love 40 count, but if I'm going to do a color, I usually go down to 36 or even in this case, 32. And the reason I went to 32 is that's the only thing I had in the color I wanted. Um, so because it's easier on my eyes, you know, the darker fabrics are a little harder to see, even with your magnifier, even with your light. Um, so that's another tip. If you're having a hard time working on some of the darker fabrics, but you want that look, then consider going to a bigger count fabric. And that's confusing because it's not really a bigger count. It's more threads per inch. So you're actually going down in the count number to get a bigger working surface. Um, so there's 56 count, which is very tiny and there's 46 count and there's 40 and there's 32 and there's 28 with 36 in there. The lower you get, the bigger the working space is for you to stitch on. I hope that makes sense. All right, so those were the two things I just wanted to tell you about fabrics. Now, let's go to stash because I've gotten some fun things in the mail and fun things, new patterns from market that I want to work on. And I bought my first antique sampler, which I'm super excited about because I do want to chart it. Um, because I love the border of this so much and you're not going to be able to see it that closely, but it's just the most gorgeous border. Now let me unwrap it. And it's by L. I can't determine if it's Elvinia or Elfinia Collins and it was done in 1831. And here's the sampler. Look at that. I mean, doesn't that look so fragile? Of course there's holes in it and this teeny tiny over one alphabet I haven't counted the linen count yet to see what count this is because I need my magnifying lamp to do that but this border it has so many different colors of flowers and I'll show you the back I don't know if you can see a little brighter on that so I can't figure out 
if she's Alvinia or Alfinia, but I think it's an F in there just based on the leftover stitches. And then it says a diligent scholar is an, oh, let me see, I wrote it down. A diligent scholar is an ornament to a school. All I could make out was a diligent scholar is an ornament and we couldn't figure out the rest. And then when I was at work yesterday or a couple days ago, Bonnie and I were looking it up and Googling it and there was another sampler done in 1828 that had that particular saying. And when we looked at it, we were like, yeah, that's what it says. And a diligent scholar is an ornament to a school. So anyway, that was fun. It was fun to get my first sampler. I love so many things about this and I'm really looking forward to charting it and stitching it. It'll be fun. So that is one thing that I got. I also got my um, skinny stitchers pillow from Under the Woolen Willow from Michelle. She has a skinny stitchers club. Um, she has a, another skinny club too. Her clubs are super fun. She has strawberry clubs. Anyway, you pay ahead and then once, a, I think it's once a quarter, I'm going to get a little pillow with a stitching word on it. And this first one says a stitcher and it has a needle and it has a little heart charm on it and it came with the cutest little note. So that was fun to get in the mail. I bought a princess hoop, which I've been wanting to try. And um, it's really interesting. It has a little um, bracket here that expands a little bit, but I'd seen online people say that it holds your fabric really tight. And so I was super interested in that. I would like to find a little bigger size. This one I think is a five inch one. So that was fun also. I'm giving up on the Duchess. I think it's Duchess, right? The one with the little button because I've seen two more go for like the 300s. I can't afford that. All right, then the next thing I got was from Stitch Folk. And if you have not ordered any of Barry's bags, you should get on her list. She puts bags up in her Etsy shop. I'll link to her below. Um, but about, I think it was in January, she had this offer for the birthday girl project bag, which I thought perfect because I'll get it in February and I'll use it for my birthday project. And then I read the fine print and it said it wasn't shipping until March, which is totally fine. And she did ship it exactly when she said she'd ship it, but isn't that cute? I think that girl's expression is hilarious. And then floss cards with the same image came along with it. So I am gonna put my Quaker dwelling into my birthday project bag. So that was another fun. And then when I talked, remember when I talked about the Hummel um, book that I had that I want to someday do more out of, that was my first cross stitch piece was a Hummel that I gave to my grandparents. And I shared that I think on Floss Tube 22. And then several of you said there's a Christmas Hummel book too with Christmas patterns. So I found this on eBay and got this. I don't know if there's any necessarily that I want to do in there, but I love having it. It was fun to look at it. And you know, it wasn't an expensive book. So I might, I might do that angel. Or I like the baby Jesus with Mary. Well, there's some fun ones in there. There's just never enough time to do all the patterns. I woke up at four in the morning last week and all I, I couldn't stop thinking about how am I ever going to have time to do all the patterns I want to do. And yet, the next section we're going into is all the patterns I've added since my last floss tube. Uh, so, some of these were from Market. So one is Keeper of the Pins, and I want to do all of those little pin pillows on there, and we'll have more of those again in the shop soon. We sold out of all of those, but just really cute, cute designs in there. She's had a couple of books now in this kind of format, and um, you know, when I was doing that Quaker dwelling, working on that, I discovered I really like doing bricks. You know how I said that earlier? So this pattern from um, Paulette at Plum Street, this is the day. I love that little pink house. 
and um, she was talking in her, she was talking about it as we were standing there and she said, um, you know, she, it's not comfortable or normal for her to necessarily use bright colors. And she felt like that sun was really a bright color for her to use, but she was proud of herself for using that. And I just think the whole piece comes together beautifully. More of those on order as well. She had to get another printing of those. Not surprising, it's such an adorable pattern. Humming of the Bees from Blackbird. And I love this piece so much. Um, let's see if I can show you the inspiration for it, the inspiration sampler, and then how Alma designed it. And one of my favorite things is this wonkety sideways tree, which is totally one of her designs. And we'll have more of those next week. And I don't remember if I showed you this one, but I have had my eye on this one for a long time and I really want to do it. I don't know that I'll get it done before Thanksgiving, but I love this first Thanksgiving. I'm still looking for patterns that I can do for like the month of November. A lot of the fall patterns I do, I feel like they look too pumpkin-y or too Halloween-y and I want some designs, some small pin pillows, some bigger designs just for Thanksgiving and I just love this one. So looking forward to that. And then, so this that's all my stash, all the stash I got. So my plans for next time, I think I showed you this the last time and you know how I'm doing samplers for all the different members of my family and I picked this one out to do for my dad and I am doing it on 40 count platinum, which I'm going to pull out and show you, which I got a yard of it just because it's one of my favorite colors. And then I'm using NPI number 324 which I bought three skeins. I think I will only need two skeins, but isn't that so pretty? Oh, I can't wait to start. I hope I can start on that soon, like in this next month or so. Every time I get hanks of MPI into the shop, I just am smitten with them. And just a reminder, we almost every order I put in with them now, I have special orders of different colors of hanks for you all because you email me and say, can you get me a hank of this color? And we're always happy to do that. And we do put in um, orders with MPI about every three weeks. So we put them in frequently. They ship immediately, like the same day. Uh, so you will never have to wait very long for it. But I just love this color on that for this. Yeah, that's going to be a project. This was one of Jacob's this was the 2020 stitch along and the way he does his stitch alongs is he gives you a different piece every month for a year and so I figure if I just stitch it that way which I'm pretty sure each page is probably one of the months you know just do the one page and call it good each month if I could do that I could have it done in a year that would be fun so that's what I want to work on. I'm going to work more on his eyes on the sparrow, of course more on that Quaker that I can't put down. I also want to get back to Mary Harry, which is a modern folk uh, embroidery pattern too that I shared with you the last time. And there are a lot of really fun stitches in that. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. And then I need to get some spring smalls. I don't have any spring, well, I don't have any spring projects at all, uh, big or small. I When I was getting all of my Easter stuff out, I found this little piece that I did way, way back. Uh, this was a cross-eyed cricket. And I just put a braided ribbon on it because I'm pretty sure I hung it on a wreath. Now I just want to finish it into a little pillow. So I will take this off and finish it but this is like the only spring piece only Easter piece only spring piece that I have and so when I had to decorate my little hutch for Easter I just I don't have any stitching in there I just have 
cute little rabbits and eggs and bunnies and things. So anyway, I need to um, get some of that done. And then I really, and I know I've shared this one before, I really want to do the Blackbird 9 that I've talked to you about before. And I'm going to do this on um, Fiber on a Whim Cream and Sugar, 40 count, which probably then is about 44 count. Um, but that's all the Loose Feather series. And I was talking to somebody in, who's in store shopping and I was laying all of my um, pattern pieces out. So I have the layout I want to do because I'm going to do them all in, that doesn't show you any of those if I do it that way. I'm going to do all nine in one piece, which I think will be really super fun. I had bought one of these before, the one with the cat on it, to do individually. But then I saw it on Instagram, all done as one piece, and had to do it. So, if you want to stitch along with me, I did order sets of all nine, and we have them in the shop. Because sometimes it's hard to find all of the pieces. And this is the one with the cat that I had purchased previously. So, that's the other thing. So, the two new things I want to start is that whole year stitch along piece and the blackbird nine is what I'm calling them right now loose feathers okay so that's plans for next time three things I wanted to tell you do my three things and two of them I don't have here so I'm gonna have to insert a picture but the first one is I ordered some holiday boards now I first saw this on Carol Saltbox Stitchers floss tube and they're just the kind of illustrations and graphics I love. So I went right over to order them. And um, this comes from Early Things 1776 on Etsy. I will link to them below. But she does these, she calls them canvas boards. So I think it's, it's printed on canvas. So it's very sturdy. But here are the ones I got. And so I'm going to put this back behind me after showing it to you. I love this snowman also love these children sledding and then I got this bigger one for summer 4th of July so they're really kind of fun I think um, I don't remember how much they were maybe the whole all four of them were $60 or something I don't remember um, but it's just like I said the kind of graphics and the kind of illustrations old-fashioned vintage that I love so that's one of my three things I want to tell you about the second thing is tea cakes okay I probably never would have tried a tea cake because I don't I do drink tea I drink more coffee um, but I'm not really big on cake but I do love cookies well I tried a tea cake at Meredith's bake shop in Franklin Tennessee and I have found a recipe that almost tastes almost exactly like it now I'm sure theirs are way better but uh, it was so delicious so I'm gonna put a picture here so I made them twice so I could kind of experiment with them and I will put the recipe below I'm also putting the recipe in our Cross, Colorado Cross Stitcher newsletter coming out next week to share with you guys. So that's thing number two. And then thing number three I meant to bring from work. Totally forgot. I'm like a pack rat when I leave work and I know I'm going to be floss tubing because I have this huge bag or sometimes a crate or sometimes a box and I'm pulling things off the shelf and putting everything in and hoping I have everything to bring home for the, for the video and I forgot this little guy. So I'm going to put a picture in, in in just a minute, but it is a wooden rabbit head with spectacles that I got at Hobby Lobby, and here it is. I know, isn't he so cute? So I have him on our um, seasonal display table at work. And I found them at Hobby Lobby, and there weren't any on the shelves, but there were a bunch way up high. And I asked the guy if I could, if he could get one down for me, and he said, "Oh, those are very popular." 
And I said, oh, are they? And he said, they're all, all over Floss, or not Floss Tube, all over Instagram. Everybody's talking about them. So I hadn't seen them all over Instagram, but he is really cute. And I will look forward to having him in my home display at some point. But anyway, so those are my three things, holiday boards, tea cakes, and the bespectacled rabbit. All right, last time our question of the day was, what is your favorite fabric to stitch on? And I mean, the answers really run the gamut. Everybody loves all different things. And I think the bottom line is, stitch on what you love to stitch on. If you're stitching on a fabric that is too small for your eyes, and it makes your eyes too tired, or it's stressing you out because you feel like you should be stitching on, you know, 32 count or 36 count or 40 count or whatever, because everybody else is doing it, but you're just not enjoying it, don't do that. Stitch on something that brings you relaxation and uh, just an enjoyable evening or day of stitching. Um, don't feel like if you're stitching on Ada that you should be stitching on linen. If you're stitching on linen, don't feel like you should be stitching on Ada. Stitch on whatever kind of fabric you like in whatever count you like doing whatever you want to do. So that, that was my uh, synopsis of all the questions and all of your answers. Okay, question of the day for next time. So leave this in your comments below if you'd like to. What was your favorite subject in school? I don't know what made me think of that as I was trying to think of a question of the day. Um, but it's always interesting to hear what people liked. Like I, in high school, my favorite class was creative writing because I had really a lot of fun doing short stories and my teacher was so encouraging of my silly short stories that it was just a process I really enjoyed. And then in college, my favorite class was psychology, especially child psych. I just loved learning about, um, you know, what, what helps us to develop into the adults that we become someday and all of the different experiences that go into that. So I'm curious to know what your favorite class was. And you can tell me what your favorite class was in grade school or junior high or high school or college, whatever you want. Anyway, share that below if you'd like to. All right, we did a drawing for this beautiful project bag by Wanda at Pinky Promises Store on Etsy, all one word, I will link below. And the winner for that is Mary Weber. And Mary said her favorite fabric to stitch on is 14 count Ada and sometimes 16 count Ada. So Mary, if you will contact me, my email address is in the box below and I will send this off to you. I love these project bags. You know, I tend to really like the bags that have a vinyl front so that I can see what's in that. Now that's not to say I don't love that new birthday bag I bought and I have other Stitch Folk bags from Barry, um, <clears throat> but I order from Deborah, Joyful Stitching, Joyful Stitching Store. I will link to her below. She, she donates a lot of beautiful project bags for us for me to give away and I love her bags. I'll have one of those for you again next time in the next drawing. So that's kind of what I tend towards. So that is it for all my stitching news. Now I'm going to go into shop news for just a couple, not more than a few minutes. And so first of all we have two things back in stock that sell out every time I get them in and one is the Ultimate Sampler Motifs book by Brenda Keys. We have a good stock of that back in the shop and I know a lot of you have discovered that restock already. Um, this, this book is, I, I love this book. In fact, I was talking to uh, my customer friend Kyle at Loopy this week and we were looking at one of her samplers that she's doing. It was an interesting discussion. In fact, I'd love to know what you guys are, what your thoughts are about this, but she was doing one of those samplers that um, is an exact reproduction of a little girl who stitched mistakes and all. And she was just saying, you know, some of those things I just can't, I just can't do that in my sampler. And I totally get it. I have felt the same way. Like she said, she was stitching one and there was a line that just kind of goes down that way 
and she got it done she stitched it like that and she just didn't like how it looked so of course you always have license to change anything you want to change um, and so there were some icon or motifs in the sampler that she had brought in and she said I just I want to replace them with something else because I don't really get these two that's where a book like this comes in because there are remember I know I've flown through this before but there are so many different um, subjects and motifs in here that if let's say there is a wonky bird on the sampler that you're doing and you don't care for that wonky bird pick another bird out or pick out a an owl or a cat or a horse or whatever if there's a certain vase of flowers that just doesn't appeal to you you'll find all kinds of vases of flowers in here so I love this book not only for designing your own things if you're wanting to do that but for um, exchanging things in pieces to make it more personal or make it more about things that you love or things that are important to you and then I know that when I shared my sampler in a jar I took all of those motifs from here as well so these are back in stock the other thing that is back in stock until we sell out again is the project bag for project bags this is my favorite bag um, this is the large size. I don't have any of the medium size in stock right now, but um, I did a little video on my Instagram showing how many bags you can fit in here, but I routinely keep eight project bags in here with the fabrics, with the flosses, with the patterns. It just holds a ton. When we ship them to you, uh, they shipped all smushed up. And if I remember to, I put a sticker on your order form that says, fill your bag full and it will unsmush and it will stay that way. So once you have it full, even when you empty it, it's still going to stay um, nice and squared up for you. But it does arrive smushed, just so you know. And I love this bag because I keep all of my current ongoing whips. And what that means is the ones that are in active rotation, the ones that I want to work on every couple of weeks or once a month or once every six weeks, all my current whips go in this bag. And then in the front, you can keep extra floss tubes and your corner gauge and your scissors and your extra needles and what have you in this front section. So those are two things that are back in stock in the shop. And then I wanted to show you just some of the patterns that I brought home or I brought or I have from market brought in my little pack bag okay and the other thing I wanted to tell you before I do that is um, these are my new favorite thing to hold my flosses so let me see if I can pull this one out I put all of my hang all of my flosses on it like this and the reason I like it is because I hook this then over my needle minder I mean it also magnetizes but I, I hook it over so it's easy to pull on and off I just love it and if I have more threads than just a few I hook the small end up it's just a shower stainless steel shower hook I think they're called we do have them in the shop you can also find them I don't know anywhere online they're usually about a buck a piece um, we sell them in sets of five for 375 but so if you order this week because I wanted to do a special um, in this floss tube I'm going to be sending you some of my floss cards and one of these floss rings so you can try it out now my floss cards come not punched because that way you can punch the way you want I usually punch a hole in the top and I have a little square punch that I do in the bottom because I like how things sit in a square punch but some people don't like square punches some people like the little round punch so do what you want with it but I will pop those in your orders this week as I'm packing those up all right now on to some of the new patterns and some spring patterns because like I told you I need to start doing some spring things so I pulled spring things first and these are not necessarily new so spring whirly wig from heart and hand that's a cute little one looks like they finished it in a little dome I probably would just finish it in a little circle like that and um, bird in hand spring I love these little pillows because they're so quick to finish and it's quick to have a whole bowl full of them 
Um, and then Wee One, Spring Bird, cute. And then new from market is Berries and Blooms, which I'm going to have to make. I love that. And the little coffee bird. So cute. All right. Let's look at some other new patterns that were just out at market. Uh, Adorn Your Heart by Plum Street. I just think that little pink house is cheerful. It's just a cheerful pattern. And I love it. I don't know what it says. Let me put my glasses on. I'll tell you what it says. Adorn your heart. Adorn your mind with knowledge of the sweetest kind. And it has a little polka dotted, looks like a bull, a cow, and an angel. And a really pretty floral border. So that one's gorgeous. I love this one from Stacy Nash because I love the, the letters in Liberty. Now I'm going to make mine into a pillow for patriotic display this summer. Um, I just love the, the lettering she did. Um, Stitching with the Housewives has this, which I thought was very fun, um, home. So you stitch the H, M, and E, and then you swap out the letter O for um, different pattern for different months. So that one was kind of a box berry wreath, and then this one has six more options that you can stitch and just switch out the O. So I thought that was kind of creative. Of course it was, because... Priscilla's always creative. Um, what remains from Blackbird? Now I sold out of the Humming of the Bees and the new book, of course, right away. We still have some of these. We have Humming of the Bees coming again. I think the book is in reprint already, so we will have that back. But I just think this is so pretty with that big red flower in the middle and then the sweet house. Such a pretty sampler. Uh, this not from market, but newer is Red Letter Day from Shakespeare's Peddler. A lot of little red samplers. So if you're doing a red sampler wall or a one color sampler wall, a um, lot of fun designs in here to pick from. And again, you don't have to do it in red. You can do it in whatever color you want. And then we have some from... Um, with a needle and thread, of course, those are already on reorder, except I do have Elizabeth Hunt, 1845, still in stock. That's one of her new samplers, reprint, reproductions, I'm pretty sure it was. And Regina Heibel, and I, what I think is so pretty about this is the soft colors. I don't know if that's washing out, if you can see that. And then this sweet little pillow, bird pillow on the back, which would be fun to do just in itself for spring. That would be perfect. And then a new company that we added in, Primrose Cottage. So I thought this was a fun one. There we go. Um, for a patriotic design. And here's a smaller one, patriotic design from them. And then they also have this whole B series. So Hive Rules. A, B, C, B, nice. So that was a fun new find too. So I think that's it for today. I think that's all I had to share with you. All I needed to talk to you about shop stuff. Um, don't forget to hop over to coloradocrossstitcher.com if you need any supplies. Uh, there's anything we can do for you, let us know. We do get your orders out. Um, not, I always say 99% of the time because, you know, once in a while we have to contact you about a question in your order or something, but 99% of the time we get it out same day or within 24 hours. So, and we're so uh, appreciative of your orders. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will subscribe and um, click that little bell below if you want to get noticed when I have another new one up. I will not be gone so long this next time. Hopefully I'll be back in three weeks or so. I've got um, a couple of trips coming up, so I'm going to kind of, you know, figure out my schedule within there so that I can get a floss tube in as well. So I'm so glad you joined me. I appreciate you watching, and I will see you the next time. Bye-bye.